Nico FPV says, I'm building an X8 Cinelifter. I want it to be able to hold the O4 Pro, but I can't find any good frames that aren't crazy expensive. So, Nico, unfortunately, I don't have an option for an X8 Cinelifter for you. Um, you might be able to come up with some kind of a 3D printed adapter to adapt a quad frame to an X8. That might be a way to go. Um, but the question that I would ask you is, why are you building an X8? And here's the thing that people don't understand about X8s, and maybe you do understand it, uh, but, but a lot of people don't. Um, let's say you've got a quad, an, a quad 8-inch, and you want to carry more weight. Okay? One option is to go from a quad to an X8. An X8 being an octocopter, eight motors, in a quad configuration, one on top of the other. That's going to not quite double your thrust. You have double the motors, but you don't have double the thrust because the motors are coaxial, which means the motor on bottom doesn't make, it's not quite as efficient as the motor on top because it's eating the dirty air from the top motor and you, you, you get maybe 75% additional thrust, maybe 80, 85% depending, but you don't get double the thrust. You do get extra thrust though. The other thing you could do is you could go from an 8-inch to a 10-inch quad or an 11-inch quad or a 13-inch quad. You can increase the prop size. And the thing I want to tell you is that if you care about flight time, in addition to, to sort of payload capacity then you do not want to go to a coaxial octo. A coaxial octo will always have shorter flight time than a quad of the same prop size. That's the revelation. And the first time I figured this out, it surprised me. And I've since run into people who think, I have a quad 8-inch and I get 20 minutes of flight time. Maybe at 10 minutes. I don't know. It depends. 10 minutes of flight time. I want more flight time. So I'm going to go to an octo. No, you will get less flight time. The reason for that is that you have added weight. You've added more motors. That's additional weight. You've added another ESC. That's not very much weight. And more importantly, you need a bigger battery. You have twice as many motors. So you're pulling not quite twice as many amps, maybe more than, I don't know, you're pulling about twice as many amps. Since you're pulling twice as many amps, you run the battery down twice as fast. Oh, but Bardwell, you're wrong. Because, I'm, I'm, yes, I have, tw I have more weight, but those motors have to run half as fast. So they're pulling half the current. So it all cancels out. But no, it doesn't. That's my point. It doesn't quite cancel out. There are inefficiencies. And long story short, when you double the motors you shorten the flight time. So what do you get when you go to a coaxial configuration? You get more thrust. If I have an a, co a, a quadcopter 8-inch and I need to carry a camera that weighs 2 kilograms, I don't know. Or if I have a battery and I want increased flight time, so I'm going to go to a bigger battery and my battery weighs 2 kilograms, maybe it weighs 3 kilograms, I don't know, what, whatever weight makes sense. If I want longer flight time, if, I, if, if there's too much weight and the quad basically it's hovering at 75% throttle, I don't have enough thrust. I can get that thrust by going to a coaxial octo, but I will get shorter flight times, but I'll be able to fly. If you want more thrust and longer flight times, you go to a bigger prop. It is almost always better to go to a bigger prop when you want to carry weight instead of going to a coaxial configuration because the coaxial the only reason you would use a coaxial configuration is if you are constrained on your footprint if you absolutely cannot go from a 5 inch prop to an 8 inch prop or from an 8 inch prop to a 13 inch prop for some reason that is absolutely out of the question then you go to a coaxial and you'll get shorter flight time but at least you'll be able to carry the weight okay but get rid of the idea in your head that you can get longer flight time by going from a quad configuration to a coaxial octo. You can't. And so when you say I'm building an X8 Cinelifter, my question is why? 
You got an eight inch Cinelifter or, or whatever, 13 inch Cinelifter, five. Why aren't you just going from a seven inch prop to a 10 inch prop or from a 10 inch prop to a 13 inch prop? Is there a reason? Because you, you, would, you would get longer flight time and better performance by going to a bigger prop. Okay. Is that the same for a normal octocopter, not coaxial? Um, yes, but not as much. So if I go from a quad to a normal octo, now I am getting twice as much thrust because the motors are no longer coaxial, so there's no longer the efficiency loss. But I have still added weight. I have still added amp draw. And uh, and so it, it's not quite as much loss. It's It's closer to breaking even, but you still don't break even. You would still be better to build a quad with bigger props. Size for maneuverability. Yes, absolutely. If I need, if you build a big 13 inch quadcopter, it's going to be kind of lumbering in the air. If you build an eight inch or a 10 inch coaxial octo that makes the same amount of thrust, it's going to be much more nimble. Absolutely. That's a use case. Redundancy. Well, S. Jackson, I hope you're not flying beta flight because beta flight doesn't have redundancy. It does not. Uh, in order to have redundancy, like you have, you have the coaxial motors. So if one motor fails, the other one can keep flying, right? Except beta flight's mixer doesn't take that into account. In order for that to work, the mixer has to be able to recognize that the motor has failed and reconfigure itself to av to, to take that motor out of the configuration. With beta flight, if you have a, a, a redundant configuration, like you have an octo or a coaxial octo, the minute one motor fails, the quad falls out of the air. Because beta flight tries to spin that motor to max, and that motor makes no thrust, and beta flight puts all the other motors to min, and then that's it. Only RG Pilot can do redundant motors as of today. Well, probably DJI, but no, of the open source, open source firmwares, only RG Pilot does that. 